morning, this Wednesday morning. Praise the Lord. It is our Ash Wednesday, and uh, remember we are uh, starting the Lenten season, our 40 days journey of Lent season, and uh, a kindly reminder that today in the evening we shall be having our Ash Wednesday service where we shall come and to start this um, uh, Lenten period, the journey of our salvation, where Jesus is to go to the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights, fasting and praying because of the afflictions that are ahead. Uh, it's a reminder of the journey of our salvation. So kindly let us be present to remember the work of redemption, how it started, how Jesus journeyed through it all in pain and in agony for the sake of our salvation. As we continue with our theme on redemption, it is our high time that we come and start together and learn what Jesus did for our sake and be reminded of this journey and the pain that Jesus suffered on the cross for our salvation. And in connection with that, we are still looking at the topic on redemption, still referring to the life and to the story of King Manasseh. We have read about him. We have seen how wicked he was, but still God forgave him. That is our own life. That is our own story that many a times that we stray, many a times that we fail, many a times that we have found us in compromising situation despite having known God, despite coming from Christian families, despite being brought up by Christian parents, but many a times we fall. But our God is very merciful. And I remember we talked of a story of a sheep which was straying from the grazing land and the shepherd was very disappointed with it until the shepherd decided to break its leg so that it can have the, uh, feel the pain and at least settle instead of going astray to the bushes where it can be destroyed by the bears and the lions. And at time, God calls for our attention during afflictions. God calls us back to him because he needs us not to stray. He is not ready to see us being destroyed by the devil. He is not ready to see the people he created, the people he calls his own, going astray and being destroyed. And even, um, even after leaving this world, remain in eternal hell. This is what happened to King Manasseh. He was so wicked. And even in our human nature, we would expect that God would just destroy him and get rid of him out of the face of the world and make him be forgotten forever. But when we come to verse uh, 12 of chapter 33, Second Chronicles chapter 33, verse 12, the Bible says that in his distress, he sought the favor of the Lord his God, he humbled himself greatly before the God of his ancestors. And when he prayed to him, the Lord was moved by his entreaty and listened to his plea. So he brought him back to Jerusalem and to his kingdom. Then Manasseh knew that the Lord is God. And afterwards, he rebuilt the outer wall of the city of David, west of Gihon Springs in the valley, and as far as the entrance of the fish gate, and encircled the hill of Ophel. He also made it much higher. He stationed military commanders in all the fortified cities in Judah. He got rid of all foreign gods and removed the image from the temple of the Lord, as well as the altars he had built on the temple hill and in Jerusalem, and he threw them out of the city. Then he restored the altar of the Lord and sacrificed fellowship offering and thanks offering on it and told Judah to serve the Lord, the God of Israel. This is now a changed man after affliction. Now, the point here is afflictions may be what brings someone to the Lord. This is uh, somehow very true. If you listen to the testimony of many Christians, they have good testimonies of how God humbled them through affliction until 
they turned to God and accepted Redeemer, accepted to be born again. Manasseh, this time, he's now bound in chain. Uh, uh, his nose is um, already hooked in a bronze or in a chain of bronze. He is a shackled. He is in pain. He is in distress. He is now trying to remember the God of his father, Hezekiah. In his distress, the Bible records, he remembers the God of his ancestors. He remembers the true God. He remembers, this is a merciful God that I have sinned against. This is a God who my father served and he was at peace. And this is where now he is in his lowest and he is humbled so much. The Bible says that he humbles himself. He cries to God who hears. What a merciful God we serve. What a good God we serve who is moved by our action of coming back to him. The Bible says that the Lord was moved by his entreaty and he listened to him. So God brought him back to Jerusalem. Remember, he was in distress in a foreign land, in Babylon. But look at our merciful father. He brings him back to his own kingdom and brings him back to the throne to continue leading his people. Maybe people complained. Maybe people felt, now what has God done to us? He has brought him back again. But this time around, he's coming a changed man. And you can see what he did. If you read the whole chapter from verse 14 all the way downwards to verse 24, it is telling us the reforms that he made after he faced this affliction. So many times we go through affliction. Let us look at them as God giving, or, or as God uh, uh, putting or calling us, or God give, giving us attention so that we may return to him. Psalm 119 verse 71 reminds that, that, that it is good for me to be afflicted so that I will learn God's law. King David wrote this verse reminding us that sometimes when we face afflictions, God is calling for our attention. God is reminding us that we may have gone away from his laws just like Manasseh had done and as we have read. So Manasseh sought God in his distress and God remembered him and God helped him. In our lowest point, let us turn to our maker. Let us turn to God. Look at the story of the prodigal son. In his lowest, that is when he remembers his father. So afflictions not only come to us to destroy us, but many a time they come as a way of calling us to attention and to remind us that we need to come back to him. Affliction will not only come to the unsaved. Affliction will not come only to those who do not know God, but they also come to us as believers so that we may see where we are straying away and again turn to God. So they sometimes come so that they may bring us back to the fellowship with our maker and help us to grow our faith. If maybe we are stagnating in faith, we are not growing, we are not coming to maturity, God brings them so that in that time of distress, we may seek him and grow to another level. Manasseh humbled himself before God. He prayed and God had him. God brought him back. God rest, restored him to his kingdom. Why don't we go to him even when we are not in distress? Why wait until we are distressed and troubled and call upon the name of the Lord? God is reminding us that he longs for that relationship. He longs to bestow loving kindness to us. He is longing that we go to him every day not to wait until we are distressed, not to wait until we are broken, not to wait until we face a distressing situation. He is telling us, kindly come to me every day, kindly repent every day, so we can come boldly to the throne of mercy, to the throne of grace anytime, because once we accept Christ, he is ready to restore us back to him. Another point that we can learn from Manasseh, God hears the prayer of a sinner. We should not think that sinners are not heard. God hears. Once we pray, once we realize the need for repentance, God's 
ears are open to that prayer of a sinner who uh, a sinner who realizes the need for Jesus a sinner who knows that now my time to turn back to God has come and humbles himself before God through repentance God is ready to receive them back Manasseh did just that and God had him in his time of distress and he knew that God was Lord. He knew that the Lord was God. And as a result, he put away his strange gods. He put away everything that was against the will of God. And this is a true evidence that he was again, he was now converted as a king. He also commanded his people of Judah to serve the true God. So God is calling us, even in time of sin, sin, to know that he can still hear us. Even time that you have strayed away from him, Please do not forget to pray. God still hears us. He will not only listen to the prayers of the righteous people, but he also listens to the prayers of sinners, just like the way he did to Manasseh. Why wait? Keep praying. Why wait until afflictions come? Pray. Come closer to God. He is ready and waiting to redeem us. So redemption is for all. Redemption is open for all through Christ who died for us and who is ready to hear us and forgive us of our sins. God hears the prayer of a sinner. Why wait? And he's calling you back. So let us come to him in repentance and truth and he will forgive us of all our sins. May God bless you. May God be with you even as we start the journey of the Lenten period together and as we look upon the pain that Christ experienced so that we may get this redemption we are enjoying today, so that we may be bought back. God put up with our sins for so long, even he sent his only son, sinless as he was, and his blood became the price of our redemption. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <music>